VPNs are great tools, but sometimes we might run into a slight hiccup or two. In this edition of Tech Talks, we'll show you how to troubleshoot some common VPN issues using the RV340 logs. Next. IPsec VPN, or Virtual Private Network, allows you to securely obtain remote resources by establishing an encrypted tunnel across the internet. To start things off, we'll click on System Configuration, then select Log. First, we'll need to make sure that the log is enabled. We can leave the log buffer at the default value of 1024. For severity, we'll choose the debugging. For our category, we'll choose All. We'll go ahead and apply these changes. Next up, we'll head over to Status and Statistics for a few fun facts on our VPN. We'll choose to view logs. For the category, we'll deselect all and individually check VPN and SSL VPN. We're only going to be looking at VPN traffic. For severity, we'll stick with all. Okay, so before we get too hasty and show those logs, we'll have to make sure we try and establish a VPN connection first and foremost. After that's done, we'll move on and click on Show Logs. After the logs pop up, we'll see that our VPN connection failed. When we search through the logs, we can see messages that are failing. Our login forms say we have an invalid hash or PSK, pre-shared key. An incorrect pre-shared key can cause a VPN connection to fail. Let's fix the pre-shared key and then see if we can establish a VPN connection. You know how your parents always told you to look both ways before you cross the street? The same applies here, my friends. We'll want to check both sides of the VPN tunnel to make sure that the key is the same on both sides. After checking both sides, we were able to see that on our client side, the pre-shared key was incorrect. Once the correction was made, the tunnel was able to be established again. We can recheck the logs by clicking the refresh button we can now see that we were able to establish a VPN connection and that there are no longer any failed messages. Here, we can see in our logs that our pre-shared keys match. But the fun troubleshooting issues don't end there, folks. Let's look at another common issue with the VPN connection. Let's go ahead and refresh the logs. In the logs, we still see an invalid hash or pre-shared key. We know that the pre-shared keys are fine, however, as down here we see an invalid IDV1 payload length decryption failed message. This message could mean we have an IPsec profile mismatch. This is most likely within the encryption. If the encryption fails, then so will the pre-shared key. Let's check our IPsec profile on both sides of the VPN to see if they match. We'll click on the VPN option and choose IPsec profiles. We'll go ahead and look at the profile that we are currently using for the VPN. For this example, it's green underscore pro. Okay, after reviewing both IPsec profiles on both ends, we can see that the encryption on the client side is set to 3DS, while on the RV340, the encryption is AES128. Let's change the encryption on the client side and see if we can get this VPN back up and running. After changing the encryption to match phase one AES128, We'll check to see if the VPN is running. All right, under green underscore VPN, we have one connection, which means we were able to connect again, and the issue was with the encryption. We'll return to the logs to make sure we don't have any other errors. We'll have to click on Show Logs again. After scrolling down, we can see that there are no failed messages. The VPN tunnel was a success. Here in the logs, we can also see the pre-shared keys are matching. All right, the hits keep on coming. Let's check out another common issue. We can go ahead and clear our logs and try to connect to the VPN again. Once we try to connect, we'll refresh the logs. Right now, we don't see any traffic in our logs. Oftentimes when we don't see any logs, it could be a sign that the router isn't receiving any VPN traffic. To fix this, we first wanna make sure that both of the VPN ends have an internet connection. If they do, we can check the firewall on the router as well as on the PC we're working on to make sure no corresponding traffic is blocked. Another possible issue is having an incorrect public IP address. When we check the client side, we can see that the remote gateway is incorrect. Let's correct this and try again. After correcting the public IP address on the client side, we're able to successfully connect to the VPN. We'll check the logs again. Here we can see our logs and we shouldn't see any failed messages since we were successful. Think we're done saving the day? 
not so fast. Let's check out another common issue. After we've tried to establish a VPN connection, let's click Refresh and look at the logs. Here, we see our pre-shared key configs did match, but we see no peer config found. This message could point to an issue with either a local ID or a remote ID issue. We're gonna double check our configurations. We'll click on VPN and then Client to Site Format. Our VPN is green underscore VPN. We'll click to edit it and double check. After checking our identifiers on the client side, we see that the local identifier is not the same as the remote identifier on the RV340. We'll change the local identifier on the client side to greenbowvpn.com. Since the FQDN isn't an actual domain that we own, we can change this on either side of the VPN. It's important that both match. After making the changes on the client side, we see that the VPN is up and that we have a connection. This is why logs are so important in the RV340. They help us immensely when trying to troubleshoot common VPN issues. Those are just a few of the common VPN issues and how to troubleshoot them using router logs. Thanks for watching Tech Talks from Cisco. We'll see you next time.